Hi, I'm Catherine Corr. And I'm Elizabeth Corr. And we're the authors of the Witch's Kiss trilogy, which you can hear, see here lovely, lovely displayed on the one. table. <laughs> um, our latest book, The Witch's Blood, is out now, and we're really happy to be here to talk to you today um, on Facebook. If you've got any questions about the trilogy or about writing or about writing together, please do um, send in your comments or tweet um, at us. I think uh, people are monitoring the, the um, channels. And we'd just like to do a quick shout out to Gary, who we think is watching right now, yeah. and Jane, who we hope will be watching a bit later. And Emma from Never Judge a Book, and the lovely Zoe, who we hope everything's going well for you today. Um, some questions, I think. Oh, we've got some competition, uh, yeah. actually, we're going to talk about first. So we are having a competition to win two full signed sets of um, the Witch's Kiss trilogy. And the prizes are going to be awarded at random, I think, to anybody who... Um, who puts a question in today. So if you actually send a question in, your name's going to go in a hat and you could win all three and we will sign them before we go, we promise. Okay, so I've got one question here from Sean Robertson. How different would you say your personalities are and do, do your differences help or hinder in the writing process? Um, I think Catherine is possibly on the more serious, darker side. And, yeah, uh, I like to kill the characters and make sure bad things happen to them. Well, I'm more on the more kind of fluffy bunny, light-hearted side, and I, I like to, you know, I like to make our characters laugh and our readers laugh, and I really like to save people. Um, but I think as sisters, we've got a lot in common, and you know, we grew up together, so we like a lot of the same stuff. Mm. And I think in our writing, we actually pull ourselves to get, we pull together. We're at sort of opposite ends of the spectrum sometimes, but we meet in the middle. I think yeah, it works no, well. it definitely, it definitely helps. I think we see about editor a lot of pain by editing each other's um, work. And I think in terms of process, um, I really like writing uh, in a nice, quiet space with no music and nobody talking at me. And I can't be have Lizzie in the room when I'm writing because she yeah, I'm banished. <laughs> chats, banished. chats, chats, chats. Um, I don't know what you do when you write when we're doing the first draft. When we're editing, we sometimes sit together, but with writing... I procrastinate a lot, actually. <laughs> get up, make tea, get up, get some biscuits, bourbons, uh, you know, put the gentle relaxing sound of the ocean waves in the background. But, um, but when I get down to it, then it's sort of tunnel vision, the same as, yeah. as you, I but think. We do, yeah, separate rooms, definitely. Um, Emma, has, Emma Brooksbank has sent in the question, at what age did you start writing together? Um, Ooh, can we say? I don't know. <laughs> late, be revealing. We're so old, actually. No, we, um, we both started writing separately, didn't we? So yeah. So I think I was in my, you know, I was just after my son son was born, or I was pregnant with my son in my in my sort of early thirties, and um, you wrote more earlier than that, though, didn't you? Yeah. But, oh yeah. I mean, I've been been writing fan fiction since I was about fourteen, and you were writing lofty poetry, weren't oh, you? Oh, really, really um, bad poetry, which never nobody's ever going to see because it's so bad. Under the pen name of Catherine Duvalier. Probably something really. I think terrible. it was. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Lord of the Rings knockoffs. So yes, it was, it was but bad. I think we started writing seriously. We started writing towards together towards the end of two thousand and twelve. Yeah. Um, and we submitted our first manuscript, I think, in 2014, and then... 13, end of 2013. Yeah, and then The yeah. Witch's Kiss, um, we wrote in 2014. 14, yeah. Yes. So, no, it's been exciting, actually. Yeah. It's been, like, super fast, really, and um, a bit of a whirlwind, really fun. but it's good. Um, so, Jenny Port is asking, who were your favourite authors growing up? Did you have the same taste? Um, a lot of the stuff we did like, I mean, we're both big fans of Susan Cooper. We love The Dark yes. Rising. Uh, it's a, what is it, a quintet? Five, five yeah, books, five isn't books. it? Um, just amazing, amazing books. I still remember the thrill when I first saw The Dark Rising, the actual second book, on the library table at school, and yes. it was just, like, electric, um, because you could tell from the cover it was going to be such an amazing book. No, I think I, I posted about it yeah, on Instagram no, both, a couple of days ago. And we, we go on yeah. about it quite a lot. Um, um, Terry Pratchett, we yeah, both read Terry a lot Pratchett of. Is, love his books. Um, I think I'm probably more, I read more science fiction, so yeah, I read I a lot of Isaac maybe. Asimov when I was growing up. And you've always read more kind of... I was big, t I'm, I'm a big Tolkien fan. I just, I've read Lord of the Rings to shreds and Silmarillion. Um, and I've seen all the films. <laughs> I've seen the films. Um, and Jane Austen, I'm a big, yes. yeah, I'm yeah. Really big Jane Austen fan. Um, sorry, this has gone to sleep. Um, just press it again. Press it again. Yeah, uh, yeah um, so uh, then Gareth Mead, what series of books inspire you the most? Do I think The Darkest Rising? Oh, the Narnia books, of course, I loved as well. Yes. Um, so all those sort of magical fantasy 
classic children's books. So like um, um, Narnia and The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, uh, Tom's Midnight Garden, um, all those sort of things. And definitely Lord of the Rings for me, I guess, in terms of series. Um, more recently, uh, well, anything by Neil Gaiman, actually, I, he's just amazing. I would love to meet him one day because um, I'm a complete fangirl. So Neil Gaiman's um, graphic book series, The Sandman, I just think is just absolutely work of art. In terms of YA authors, I guess it's been people, I mean, we've all both read Twilight and we did in fact love it. Um, not so much when I was pregnant with my um, youngest because yeah, I was reading the last book at that time. Yeah, that was it was quite gross. Um, Melinda Jos Salisbury. Yeah, Josephine, Fan. Angelini, yeah. Um, Julia, you can never say her surname, Kagawa. Ka <laughs> Kagawa. Yes, yeah. yes, she's, yeah, great. she's really great. We love the um, the Iron Fate series; is really, really good. Um, Susan Scott, as book bloggers in the indie community, do you use? Oh, as a book blogger in the indie community, do you use book bloggers? I would love to work with you. Yes, yeah, we, we, do. we, we do. have huge respect for book bloggers because I think they do a really difficult job. It's largely um, unpaid. Um, I know some people get some advertising on YouTube, but it seems to be very precarious. You know, they seem to change their rules the whole time. And it's a, it's a huge um, undertaking. Huge yeah. undertaking. So many books. I mean, I have just cannot keep up with the number of books that come out in terms of what I'm supposed to be, you know, would like to read. Um, so, we, we, yeah. We, we follow quite a lot of book, um, blog, bloggers on Twitter and Instagram and I've subscribed to some of them and yeah. the, the sheer amount of books that they get through. Yeah, and, and the enthusiasm. It's completely... Yeah, and it's made a difference to us because we, we've used them and um, you know, we've reached out to various people to um, ask them to take part in our book tour, blog tours. Blog tours, yeah. Um, and we've been and in uh, book boxes and stuff. Yeah, so. and it really makes a difference. It's, yeah, um, definitely. Um, Mariam. Hello, Mariam. Or I'll just um, say to Susan, if you follow us on Twitter, then oh, yeah, DM Twitter. us and um, you know, we'll get in contact with you. That'd be great. Uh, Mariam says, what are your writing tips for new writers and what future projects have you got in mind? Um, my writing tip that I always um, give to everybody is finish the book because I spent so many years not finishing anything. I would write three chapters or, or even less than that and then I'd be like, fanny around, fanny around, let me edit till it's perfect. Um, and I'd never actually finish anything. And of course, if you don't finish anything, you can never send it to anybody or, you know, read it, get it read by anybody or anything. Um, so finish yeah. the book. I think my... Um, tip would be don't get put off by rejection because mm. as a writer you will get a lot of it but um, you have to keep going and you know we, we wrote our first manuscript and um, it was almost good enough but not quite good enough yes. for us to get an agent and then we just thought well we're going to you know just write something from scratch for the second book which turned into The Witch's Kiss so yeah you know you're going to have to do a lot of editing people won't always like what you write no but and I think that's true for once you've got um, you know, once you've got published as well, you still have stuff and you have an idea and actually the ag your agent says, well, I'm not sure that's going to sell easily or whatever. So it's one of those ongoing things you have to deal yeah, with. But we all get rejected a lot. So, yes. you know, you just keep going. Um, and what pro projects have you got in mind? We have several projects we're working on at the moment. We've got a couple of middle grade projects and a couple of YA projects and we really can't talk about anything more than <laughs> really, that. You really want to get going and get writing. Um, Tracy Bright asks, how long does it take to write a series of books? Um, I think it depends probably, well, how much time you're allowed and you're given for, uh, to some degree. So we um, have... Uh, it's had about six months on The Witch's yeah, we, Kiss. Yeah, everything has been quite compressed with these three books. So the first book came out in June 2016, the second book in January 2017, and then this latest book has obviously just come out. So it's been three books in quite a short amount of time. Yes. So we are faster than George R. Martin, which is a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I yeah. think it, dep I mean, it depends on the length of the book and lots of other, th but other I think, things. Yeah, it does, but it, I mean, it, um, I, I think we write quite quickly because mm. we're doing it together. So for us, it's a bit different from other authors writing on their own. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Sue Pesha, I think that is pronounced, asks, where is your most inspirational place to write? I'd love to say something really exciting for this, but actually uh, my best place to write is probably actually just shut into a room in my house with nobody bothering me and without the cats jumping up on the yeah. laptop or anything like that. I was um, going to say in my bedroom underneath the duvet. It sounds really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I just, we're not I like to relax things, and have so. fluffy pillows <laughs> just to chill out. But, you know. I do quite like writing in coffee shops sometimes, but you know, I feel like I'm having to drink loads and loads of coffee cause I, to justify my place there. Um, 
Fiona Parr, I think that is Jane. What are your most recent reads? Um, this is going to be really sad, but I've actually got, I've just got myself a Latin GCSE reader, which is all these kind of short stories in Latin, which I'm actually really enjoying because I thought I'd forgotten all my Latin and I have. So this is where she brings a certain historical yeah. perspective when we're writing together. So that's together. what I'm reading at the moment. Um, um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, also, I've started State of Sorrow by Melinda Salisbury, which is really good. Um, and I've got uh, Red Witch on the go as well, but I'm very slow at reading at the moment because I can't... I'm, when I'm writing, so when I find writing. it really interrupts, it slows my, down my reading speed. Um, I have been reading all sorts of things. I have um, got the, just downloaded The Cruel Prince and um, Frost Blood, but I've also just read The Sentinel by Joshua Winning and Clone Trilogy by Patty Larson. So you're doing a lot better than me. Well, yeah. <laughs> Probably because I'm shirking in some other respect, not doing quite so much writing. But, but um, and also Kate Orman's Dark Days, I've just picked up, so I'm start starting to read that. Uh, Virginie, hi, Virginie, um, asks, did you always agree when deciding which character would meet their untimely demise and who won? Well, me, obviously, because <laughs> so, well, no, Lizzie right. doesn't want to kill anybody. No, I hate killing people, and I always try to bring them back. Um, well, I'm like. Uh, Let me think we, of the most horrible did, thing I could do to them. We did disagree about what happened to one of the key characters that, at the end of the which is Kiss, but um, I was very keen to keep this person alive, um, but I was overruled and then by Catherine and backed up by our agent as well yeah, so and by our like, publisher you know, as well. So kind Everybody of, knew you were yeah. wrong. <laughs> it, was, it was a good call. Uh, yeah, so we know we don't always agree, but... I don't get to kill as many people as I like, sadly. No, you wanted to kill off, you know, I'd like to Grand, off didn't you, people. in the second book, and I was just not having any of it. So. Not yet. Um, how much... Sorry, this is Lauren McClellan asks, how much research did you put into each book? Um, quite a lot, actually, because I wanted to make sure... We both wanted to make sure that the, the world we were creating felt organic and real, as if the witchcraft had been there the whole time. You know, the, the idea that the Anglo-Saxons didn't really distinguish between which magic and science. Um, so their magic was very much what they, their explanation for the world around them. And the idea that all of the stuff that they did was kind of, had kind of gone underground when Christianity came along and they'd stayed there. So you have these covens uh, operating in secret for hundreds and hundreds of years. So we've got um, spells in Anglo-Saxon and spells in different languages because we think yeah. there would have been we did, we spells contributed all the way through the history. We had that checked, didn't we, by, I think, some sort of scholar in Cambridge yeah. checked. They, I mean, you the did get yeah, them because my um, Anglo-Saxon's a bit dodgy. Um, then, but we did have a few funny arguments on the way about uh, rabbits, wasn't it? When yeah, it, no. It rabbits did, when did rabbits arrive scene? in England, you see? So was it the Romans or was it the Normans? And I put rabbits in and then I was like, oh, no, I've done it all wrong. It was the Normans. But just actually, just no. Kill the rabbits. No one's going to I don't think anybody really cares apart from me, <laughs> but, yeah. So I like, to, I like to do the research. The difficulty is you get into the research and then you're like, oh, let me look at this interesting thing about witchcraft or whatever. And but, then yeah. two hours later, you've done no idea. We've done some other research, which has been more kind of how to... One, one, one piece of research was how to take out a heart through the rib Yeah, and no, I did want to know, if you actually tried to cut somebody's heart out with a sword, what would happen? Because I think you've got to get it right <laughs> when you <laughs> describe do. it, yeah? Um, so Mariam asks, would you ever write non-YA? Um, who are your fave non-YA authors and would you write contemporary? Uh, we are write, working on a couple of middle grade ideas at the moment. Um, so yes to that one. Our favourite um, non-YA authors. Um, we really like James Nicol. This Witch Lone series is fabulous. Um, uh, Matt Haig. I think some of his stuff is sort of YAE. -E, well, uh, non-YA. Yeah, but um, oh, he's Matt an adult. Yeah, no, I guess yeah. that's true. Yeah, um, I um, like quite a lot of his books. Um, oh, I can't think of anybody's names now because it's terrible. Um, would we ever write contemporary? Probably not. Well, you might do. Well, if if we wrote different things, you probably do some historical fiction, yeah, and I would I probably do, do some sort of funny contemporary sort of Bridget Jones because I love Helen Fielding and yeah. Um, but yeah, if I don't know. Not together. I think we're going to stick to. Um, Fantasy, yeah. probably. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, fantasy. We do love fantasy. I think the real world is just like... It's our just, escape, isn't it, really? Yeah, miserable enough without <laughs> reading books. Out of it, so. uh, Charlotte Conroy, if you could be a character from your books, which one would you be? Um, hmm. That's quite a difficult one, actually. I don't know. I quite like to be... 
Roshni, actually. Because she gets, you know, you can, she, she's taking over the coven from Gran, isn't she? She's going to be, like, head of the coven. Super powerful. Yeah, I'd like to be one of the younger witches in the coven. Maybe not Mary, because that's... So I can still boss you around, then? Is there... Yeah, or maybe Mary. Maybe I could be Mary. You're not sporty enough to be Mary. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine, I'll be Mary. I'll just be... Um, um, yeah, or who else? I think Cormac's a really cool character. He, he's in one of the, our new characters in The Witch's Blood, um, and he's a wizard and a healer, and he's lovely, so I wouldn't mind being him, actually. I'd quite like Finn. Um, he's an interesting character, too. Yeah, and do you keep the questions coming, because everybody who sends a question has got a chance to win one of the two copies, the sets that we're going to sign later, and um, will be given away by the lovely people at HarperCollins, so thank you for that. Um, we've got some questions on our sheet as well, which we we'll probably there's have a look here. at. Is there another question coming through? Um, so Jackie, Jackie Cooper, if you hadn't been an author, um, what would you be doing? I don't know. I always think I'd like to have been an astronaut, but I'm not very good at maths, so that might have been a really bad call. I don't think they'd have let me on the International Space Station. I'd quite like to be a doctor, because I'd quite, you know, they, they, they make quite a lot of TV shows about doctors. <laughs> so you just want to be a TV doctor? Yeah, then, like, come in and go, I concur. The guy on Friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of dramatic pauses. I'd like to do that. Uh, okay, let's have a look at some of these from our, uh, that we've got sent in earlier. Um, well, this is a good one. Okay, I'm going to give you three characters: kiss, marry, or kill these people. Uh, okay. No, no, no. I get to go first. So I'm going to give you the characters. Okay, so um, who can I give you? Um, Leo. Gwydion, this is going to be really easy, actually. And Ronan. Leo, Leo Gwydion and Ronan, OK. Mm, I'd have to say, or is it? Kill. Kiss, Mary, kill. OK, kiss Leo. <laughs> okay, kiss Leo. One of the other evil guys. Kiss Leo, marry Ronan. I think he'd be salvageable with you some think? intensive therapy. <laughs> and defo kill Gwydion. Definitely kill Gwydion, yes. OK. All right, you can ask me now. All right, um, OK. Uh, Finn, Gran, and another male character, Cormac. Finn, Gran, and Cormac. That's a lame selection, isn't it? It's a bit lame. Um, <laughs> Will you take the good ones? <sighs> okay, Adam. No, I don't mind. I just think Gran's a little bit old for me. That's all. <laughs> I could go for like you know Roshni, maybe. <laughs> okay. If you ask me, Roshni, who were the other two people? I forget now. It was Finn, Finn and Cormac. Finn, Finn, Cormac. Finn Cormac and Finn okay. Cormac and Finn's dad. Finn Cormac and Finn's dad. Well, Finn's dad is horrible. So, um, okay, well, I'll kill him, um, and I guess I'll marry Finn and kiss Cormac. That'll be all right. Excellent. Good choice. Yeah, I think okay. so. Good, good choice. Um, um, tips for somebody writing a trilogy? This is a question from Rachel. I think, actually, we didn't start off writing a trilogy, did we? We were writing a standalone, so... Yes, yeah. Um, so we had to really kind of learn afterwards what we should be doing when we were writing a trilogy. So I think, you know, in retrospect, probably make sure that you've got the... Uh, it, I think it's worked out fine, actually, but um, it would have been less stressful for us if we'd known exactly from the beginning where we were going with all of the story arcs and everything, rather than having to think afterwards... OK, how do we make this work um, over the length of the... I think we're quite lucky but... with The Witch's Kiss because a lot of people have commented and said that it's probably quite easy to read as a standalone. But yeah. I think there's so much about the world that was still unexplored in the characters that we had enough material, obviously, to carry it on and to, 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 yeah. to get through the trilogy. But any particular tips for writing a trilogy? I, did, I think it's a bit planning ahead, you know, we, we are definitely planners. And one of the other questions here is uh, from Jen is planner or pantser? Um, and I would say definitely planner, partly because we have to, because we have to know what, um, you know, we both have to be on the same page, haha, -ha, about where we're going with the story. And partly because I did try to, um, I did try to be a pantser once and just sit down and write something and it just made me, it sent me into an absolute panic. I could not I just couldn't do it. It gave me really bad anxiety trying to actually come up with this stuff on the fly without any idea where I was going with it. So, um, 
Um, so we've just got a shout out from Gary who just says, says he wants to say a massive thank you to, to us both for writing this amazing oh, series. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, thank you so much for reading it, Gary. <laughs> Nine pages left. Yeah, no, it's all the good stuff at the end. Um, mm. Emma Books Bank asks, would you ever like the books to be made into the movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. It depends would. on what or they do with that. Or an epic series. We don't really mind. Yeah, so. we don't. That would be brilliant. I mean, yeah. obviously, if they could avoid doing what they did to The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper, I think she, by the end of that... Um, no, that was a really bad film. She but... denounced it and you know, yeah. she cut all ties of that particular project. But, you know, yeah, we'd love that. That would be amazing. Um, but definitely... In fact, we have done a couple of blog posts recently for people have asked us, bloggers have asked us to do, to car, do our casting. Yes, actually, the casting um, is on our website, actually. I put it up on last weekend. Um, so, because somebody, um, Iona and Mariam are just asking, actually, do you have a character cast for your characters? Yeah, we, we had do. a great time doing that, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> we do. We like Googling people. Who, so, um, I'm never going to remember any of the names of them now. Like, who was, who's oh, our gosh. Mary? Uh, Mary? Oh, gosh, what's her name? Carly um, uh, uh, she is. She's in Skins, and she's in Maze Runner, and she's in. She's in the latest Pirates of the Caribbean film. Oh my God, that's a really lame. I can't remember her name. Um, but, and Leo was Alex Pettifer. Alex Pettifer. Um, Jack was Jamie Lee Bow Campbell Cam Campbell Bowers. Is that Bowers. Yeah. <laughs> Finn is K uh, K the guy from Rivendale. K J Apper. Ruby is Natalie Manuel, I think, is it from who's in um, Game of Thrones. Gran was Judy Dench. Gran is Judy Dench. Um, um, Roshni is uh, Mia Sayal. Yeah. Well, I wanted William Mosey as Jack, but I've got over. No, overawed. Um, um, oh yeah, and Ronan is Aidan Turner. Be still by beating. Uh, and Gwydion was uh, <laughs> Gwydion was. Um, oh, Tom Hiddleston. Hiddleston, yeah. Um, do we believe in magic? This is from Elena Kays. Um, I kind of want to. I mean, I, don't, I think, to be honest, I'm very much in a we just don't know enough about the world to know what is really out there. And it sounds a bit... What's that TV show? Um, the X-Files, doesn't it? But yeah. we don't. I mean, I, scientists say they know everything, but I think you know, the best scientists would say they admit that we don't know everything we were discovering stuff the whole time and things which are you know, very much in the anglo-saxon mindset that there's a fine line between stuff which is what we call scientific and stuff which is magical because a lot of stuff we see see now in science is magical isn't it i mean the yes. idea of people going up into space and things like that so yeah no i definitely think there's a i mean we keep hoping which is why we keep writing it and i think yeah, you know, so many people want there to be magic in the world which is why you know fantasy books yeah, absolutely. So much, There's so always going to be room for it. Um, Jackie Cooper asks, do you get involved in your book covers as this is the first thing we see on the shelves? Uh, probably just as well that we don't. No, but... probably just as well <laughs> we don't. But no, we do, we, 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 we've, we've seen sort of the kind of mock-ups and, and so forth, but we haven't had, and we've made some suggestions, but we haven't really had... No, uh, we're um, very lucky that we have an absolutely brilliant cover designer, Lisa Brewster from Black Sheep Design, and she's designed all three book covers, and we love them very much. And they're like yeah. our little special book book children, aren't they? Because they're just so beautiful. Um, and neither of us can... Well, you're better than I am. I like, literally would be like stick people on the cover, so it wouldn't be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mary Jo Campbell asks, do you take inspiration of your relationship, like being sisters and working so closely together? I think so, because definitely the main relationship, really, in all three books, the one that runs throughout all three of them is Mary and Leo. Yes, yes. Uh, and even though in the middle book there's some strain there because of the events of the first book, you know, they, they're not reacting, obviously, like normal people to what's happened to them. Um, yeah. they would, they're always there for each other, and, you know, there's no way that Mary is going to leave Leo trapped with Ronan, um, and we've we've always had an, a very strong bond yeah. as sisters, and you know um, we lost our mother about fourteen years ago, yeah. and she was ill for quite a long time. And I think yeah, we've kind of when, my, when I was we, t we were yeah, teenagers, little, um, and and I think you know we've we've sort of always grown up having each other's backs, and I think we yeah. wanted to reflect that in in the books, which I think yes. I hope we've done. Yeah, because I think you know you see lots of people. There are so many YA characters, particularly I think, where you, they're all. They're only children, and I guess that leaves room for friendships and stuff like that. But we, you know, lots of people do have siblings. We really wanted to write something that would reflect that and reflect our own closeness and not have, you know, dysfunctional siblings murdering each other and blah, blah. Which we might do in yeah, another we might book. Yeah, another book. Because that's <laughs> a fun thing. But um, 
Catherine Moore asks, what is the dynamic of your relationship? <laughs> well, um... I'm the bossy one, I would say. I'm the needy one, She's as she said on Twitter <laughs> recently. Um, uh, I'm disorganised and a bit chaotic, though my children are much smaller. And, yeah. Um, you're, you're, you know, you're very organised and get stuff done and... Um, yes, somebody has to be. Yeah, but in terms of, you know, our writing, I think, you know, we make each other laugh and... Yeah, we do. No, it's always good fun. And yeah, we um, have some really fun times writing. Uh, yeah, this is another reason we can't be in the same room because we actually just end up messing around and laughing, which would be good for us, but not so good for, you know, our deadlines and stuff <laughs> like that. Um, so I think we've only got about five minutes left. So let's look at a couple more questions that we were sent in earlier. Um, what should we... How do you approach a big structural edit? This is from Aisha. Um, hi. Um, sh I think, well, personally, I mean, I don't know if you would because we, we don't always you know, sit down and immediately edit together, but I like to look at the overall structure of the book and say, well, OK, here's where these are our themes, and if you actually break down the structure into kind of... You know, we've done those sheets, haven't we, where we yes. do, like, big yeah. spreadsheet kind of things. Um, so sometimes if you do that, you can, if you really break it down visually, you can s see where there are holes in, you know, this plot line isn't being carried through um, properly... Um, in all of the sections and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Anything you'd add to? Um, not really, just that um, I guess I think with me it's quite, you know, instinctive and just have to read it through and read it through and, and the bits that you need to work on. Yeah, she's on. a really good editor. But obviously we get a lot of help from HarperCollins and our, our lovely editor, Michelle. Yes. Um, Hi, Michelle. Oh, I keep losing my ear, my earpiece. <laughs> Don't break now. Uh, don't know. Breaking the technology. Um, OK, one more question we might have time for on here. Which Hogwarts houses would our main characters belong to? Oh, that's always a good one, isn't it? Um, I think. Well, Mary is probably some uh, kind of... She's somewhere in between Slytherin and Gryffindor, I guess. Yeah, she... She, she wavers, bit, doesn't she? Yeah, she, because she, she has all this immense power and she has this ability to be very destructive. And she's but, quite unforgiving, for, which is the, a big thing in the third book. You know, she has to learn that she's going to have to let some of this stuff go. And if she doesn't, it, it builds up into its own kind of problem. Um, but yeah, but, she, but she, ultimately she's, you know, she's a very loving, supportive, yeah, so loyal person. So she's a bit, that pushes yeah. her a bit more towards Gryffindor. Uh, I think Leo would be... I don't know, I want to say Hufflepuff for Leo. Do you think? Yeah, I think Hufflepuff. Finn, I think, is probably... He's probably a Slytherin, isn't he, really? But good Slytherin. <laughs> There's nobody that bad. Um, have we got any Ravenclaws? I think Ruby's probably a Ravenclaw, because she's very intuitive and I think she's smart. Uh, Roshni, I would say, was a Ravenclaw. Yes. Gran is probably Gryffindor. Um, Ronan? Slytherin. Slytherin, yeah. Gwydion, Slytherin. Slytherin. <laughs> I'm not sure Slytherin would have either. I don't know. Ronan's really... I don't know. Do you feel sorry, so, sorry for Ronan? Uh, Gary asks, who is your favourite character? I have to say, I do love Finn. Um, I'm a bit team Finn. I know other people are going to not agree with that and think that things should... Have I'm not, I can't actually say anything more because I might say like, spoilers, but no, I do love Finn. Um, um, my, it sounds really... Yeah, we should probably say Mary as well, shouldn't we? But actually Leo. I love Leo. <laughs> He's my fancy old brother. And... I know. You're right, but I'd rather have Leo. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be nice to have Leo as well, wouldn't it? If yeah. Have, like, you know, we really need to date, do some... What's that film, Weird Science, where they build a, ro a person? Or make our own Leo. Yeah, make our own Leo, like an aircraft. Could be a whole kit. different story. <laughs> Could be a whole, whole new trilogy. Um, OK, so I think we've got to wrap it up, but it's been lots of fun, actually. And thanks so much for sending in questions. It's been yes, great. Thank you. Um, but thank you, yeah, so thank you to everybody who's joined us today. Um, the books are available now. The new book is out. Um, the book is here. It's a lovely, lovely cover with its um, all three of them. Nice shiny black holly leaves on which are like super poisonous. So we were glad to get those in there. Um, and yeah, hopefully we're going to sign some of these shortly, and they will be sent off to whoever gets picked out of the hat for for winning.
Um, and if anyone has any additional questions, you can contact yeah, us Yeah, we're both on Twitter and we're both, we've got a website and we're both on Instagram as well. So and we love, love, love hearing from people yes, who are reading the books. So Yes, well, thank you very much for tuning in. I think we've still got 30 seconds, probably. They haven't told me yet that we can still <laughs> say. Quick, do dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, cut again. <laughs>